Hi, I'm Rob. And I'm Rob. And this is Ask Rob and Rob. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ask Rob and Rob, the show where you give us your questions, very often property related, but sometimes not, and we give you our answers, which is mostly useful. And we've got two great questions coming up, so we'll do our very best to give two great answers. But before we do, a quick reminder of how you can get your questions in. Yep, this will be one of the easiest things you do today. Just give us a call on 013 808 0035 or go to propertyhub.net slash ask. You can leave us a voicemail via either route and look forward to hearing yourself on the podcast later. If you do do that, though, please leave your name because otherwise Rob will make one up for you. Hi, Rob and Rob. I've been listening to your podcast since the start. I found it really helpful, so please keep it going. I recently completed a flip with a friend and will have about £75,000 to invest again. In the future, I'm looking to build up an income of £2,000 a month from buy lets which I predict to be about seven houses, so £300 per month each. My question is, would you recommend I keep flipping until I have enough cash to purchase seven houses at once? Or would you recommend that I invest in, for example, two houses now and wait for the market to do its work and refinance for another property purchase later on. Thank you, Sam. I've got easy on you, Sam, because you've said you've been listening to the podcast since the start. So I'm not going to be cruel. I'll just give you a nice normal name and hopefully that's uh, one that doesn't offend you. And you never know, you might actually be called Sam. But anyway, let's answer your question. Rob, what do you think? It's an interesting question and it's great to be in this position. And well done, Sam, by the way. But now Sam's found themselves in this position. How would you approach it? It is a really interesting question. And it's about cash management, basically. So property is a very capital intensive business, whether it's flipping or buying to hold, you need a lot of cash. And you're basically making a decision about how you allocate that. So let's take the extreme first and say that you don't buy any houses at all until you've got the ability to buy them all at once. Well, in that case, if you're making profit from your flips, you'll be ending up with a bigger and bigger and bigger pot of money that you can use to do your flips with, which is a good thing because it means that you'll be able to do flips on more and more expensive properties. And generally, if you're looking at making sort of a percentage overall, a percentage of a big number is bigger than a percentage of a small number for roughly the same amount of effort. So you get to move up the chain a bit and that's a good thing. However, the downside of that, of course, is that property prices generally go up over the long term. So if it does take you, say, seven years to get to the point where you've got the deposit to buy seven houses, then you'd imagine that they'll be more expensive than if you bought them today. So having established the two extreme positions, what do you do in the middle? Well, I would say, first of all, find the point at which having extra cash for your flips isn't going to be that beneficial for you anymore. So let's say that you can have a maximum of two going on at any one time because of the amount of workload and there's sort of a maximum amount that you'll need per project. So when you've got that capital, then when you complete your next flip and you've got additional capital, that could go into a deposit for a buy-to-let. So that way, a lack of cash isn't holding back your sort of cash generation business. But then you are making a start on getting those purchases in rather than having to wait until you've got the money for all of them. The other thing that I'd say about this is whatever view you come to, be flexible about it because chances are things will change. Chances are there'll be times in the market where flipping just isn't really working for you. And you might have a load of cash sitting around, but no project. And at that point, decide, you know what, I'm actually going to put this to work and buy a property. You might also get in a situation where you're trying to do a flip and you get stuck with it and you can't sell it and you decide to actually hold on to it instead. A lot of things can happen. So I think you need to be open-minded and not be absolutely locked into a plan. So Sam, if that is indeed your name, I hope you found that useful and good luck. Let's move on now to someone whose name we know for sure is Kieran. Hi, Robin. Rob is Kieran here from London. I'm just wondering if you've ever heard of deal sourcing. It's a term I came across quite recently um, and I know it can be used in other things other than property, but I was just wondering what you know about it and what your thoughts are on it. Really interested to hear. Thanks very much. Bye. Thanks, Kieran. And because your question's quite open, I'm going to give a couple of answers here. So if it truly is, what is property sourcing? And have we ever heard of it? Absolutely, yes, we have. And Property Hub Invest does a version of this. So if you want to build a property portfolio and you want some help with that because you're time poor and you want hands-off type properties, then Property Hub Invest is a property sourcing company. You will also find property sources, like individuals who operate as well, and they often have different niches. So you might have somebody who specializes in HMOs, 
Or you might have somebody who targets a particular area, say like Liverpool, and they just source property for people in Liverpool. So there are different types of individual sources and sourcing companies. So it really will depend on your circumstances, whether one is useful or not. Do you have the time to do it? And if yes, do you want to do it? Because you may want the result, but you might not want to do the work. Of course, you have to pay a fee. But if you do your research on a particular sourcing company or individual sourcer and you go, All right, OK, actually, I want to work with them, then they can save you a lot of time. And if they're good, they may be able to save you money on the fee that they'll charge you. So you effectively get the property without having to pay for it because they'll get you a better deal than you get by yourself. So that's what it is. And that's the options available to you. My second answer is, I've also seen recently that there's people selling courses around property sourcing. I know, let's find a way to sell a course for anything at the moment. But what they're basically doing is training you how to become a property sourcer for other people and saying it's a way to get into property. It is a way to get into property, just like being an estate agent is a way to get into property or being somebody who manages property or somebody who works in a building and does the maintenance there. That is all getting into property and sourcing deals for other people is also getting into property. It's a job. It's not property investment, although they try to make you feel like you are you are working with property investors and you may find it interesting, but it's a lot of effort to find and source deals. We've got a team of people who do it for Property Hub Invest, not one person part-time, a team of people. And they're backed up and supported by other people within the business as well. So do beware of those courses. I'm not saying don't do it, but they only tell you the upside of what can be done and don't really show you the reality. And the reality is it is really hard work and you really need a level of expertise and you're not going to have that by just doing a course. So I'm not sure which answer will help your question because it was quite open. But hopefully you and everyone else listening has benefited from both answers. All right. Well, that is us done for this week. We will see you again on Thursday for the Property Podcast. Looking forward to it. Hope you are too. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.